All right, we're live. Happy Monday, everyone. I am Carly, and it is Monday. Today's Zoo to You virtual safari live here at Denver Zoo is in Toyota Elephant Passage. A very special thank you to your hometown Toyota stores. They make Toyota Elephant Passage possible, so we thank you for your support. And hello to everyone joining. Again, we are on uh, the platform, the catwalk, yep, catwalk of Toyota Elephant Passage, and we have our two youngest boys, Jake and Chuck, down there. So I'm gonna flip it over so we can start talking to Victoria, one of our elephant keepers here at Toyota Elephant Passage, about these two playful boys, the enrichment they're getting today, and how they're doing. So let's turn it over. Hi, Victoria. Hi. So you're gonna be answering our questions. So if you have questions for Victoria about our elephants, specifically Jake and Chuck down there getting a bath, let us know in the comments. She'll be happy to answer them. But right now, just tell us what people are watching. So this is Jake and Chuck. Jake and Chuck are half brothers. They are really good at playing together and having a nice time. And what they're doing right now is just some relationship building and some uh, playing in the pool, getting sprayed down with hoses with some of my teammates. This is a really good way for us to be able to interact with these guys. Uh, they are 10 and 11. Jake is 10 and Chuck's 11. So they're still pretty young by uh, Asian elephant standards. Uh, they're not babies, but they are definitely adolescents. They won't be done growing till about 20. And so they still have quite a bit of maturing to do, but being young, that means that they're still really, really playful. And so having these informal sessions with them is a really fun way for us to interact and get to see them be silly like Jake is doing right now. Looks like he's got his head way down and his feet kicking up on the walls, but a really fun way for us to interact with them and get to see them be playful together and with us. So you just mentioned this, that is Jake. Yep, Jake is on the left and, and Chuck. Chuck's on the right, yeah. So Lily, age eight, hi Lily. Uh, she wants to know if elephants can run fast. Elephants actually don't run, which is a really interesting thing. One of the things that happens for somebody to be classified as running is that they have to have some feet off the ground. So when someone is running at least, or at some point they have all their feet off the ground. Um, and so what these guys do is they really just speed walk. Um, but they can speed walk pretty fast. They look pretty slow when they're just being relaxed in here. Uh, you can see Chuck's pretty relaxed, just wandering over to come and check on us. He's wondering what we're talking about up here. But these guys can get a lot faster. These guys can get up to about 35 miles an hour. So this is a really unique vantage point we don't often get here uh, at Demer Zoo. So if you're just a general me member of the public, you'll normally stand on that that platform by those doors. Yes. But we're up here. Why do we have this elevated platform and catwalk? So elephants do reach up really high. Chuck's showing that off right below us right now. It can be kind of hard to see, but <laughs> elephants do reach up really high to reach really tar tall parts of trees and plants uh, for browsing, which is eating plant material. So these guys, it's normal and natural for them to reach up high and we want to encourage that natural behavior. So up here, we're able to hang different things from our catwalk. Uh, we have some hanging enrichment in the middle of our parlor space here <laughs> as well, but this gives us an opportunity to place those things up really high, um, even if elephants are using this space. <laughs> so, oh, here's a very popular question. Um, what do they like to do together? Crosby age six wants to know. Well, Crosby, you can see these two, they just started to get a little bit playful in wrestling. Jake kind of just pushed on his brother a little bit. Um, one of these, one of the favorite things for these two to do is play sparring, which is kind of like practice fighting. As they get older, they would use sparring um, to fight for breeding rights with females. But these guys both being on the younger side, right now a lot of their sparring is just playful um, and just practice. Like I said, it's kind of like if you ever wrestle or play rough with your friends. <laughs> Kaden wants to know, do you use soap when we bathe them? Sometimes we do use soap. Um, that's only if they're really, really dirty with something that we want to get off of them. Um, like if they may have laid down in a spot that they've gone to the bathroom and they have a stain. But most of the time when we're doing uh, these kind of sessions, we're just using hoses just to kind of spray them down. A dirty elephant is actually a healthy elephant. So we want to see elephants who have things on their backs. Like you can see Chuck and Jake both have some straw and some hay, some shavings. Um, they use a lot of dirt and different things to put on their back and they use that as sunscreen and bug spray. Uh, Mark Rinker says hello. Mark is a volunteer. So hi there, Mark. We miss you. Uh, Samantha says they look like they enjoy this so much and they absolutely do. 
Hunter age six says, this is so cute and funny. Um, just remind people like Becky who've just joined how old these guys are. So Chuck, the one who's facing us now, who's playing with that tire, Chuck is 11 and Jake behind him, his half brother is 10. Let's see, Ryan wants to know, can you tell us why there's a step inside their habitat and is there an indoor pool? What you're looking at is actually a pool. It's not yep. just not filled right now. Yeah, so this pool, um, this is obviously not a pool deep enough for them to swim. We do have pools out on exhibit outside that are 11 and a half feet deep. So they are able to fully swim and these guys do love swimming. This pool is more of just kind of like a splash pool for them. Um, it's not super deep. So that step is to go down so that it can fill with some water. We do have the drain plug so you can see it's starting to fill up slowly. Um, and then they actually, if this pool is not filled for them, they have the option to push a small square on the wall that turns a shower on. So they can turn the water on in here if they want to themselves. Julie has a great question. She wants to know, do they recognize different keepers? They absolutely do. Uh, we all work with all of the elephants here. So we have a team of, of six keepers who are with our elephants all the time. And then two keepers who work between this barn and then our greater one horn and uh, taper barn. And each one of us can work with all of our elephants and ask them for all their behaviors. But when they're first learning a new behavior, only one keeper or maybe two keepers will be working on training that behavior. And as soon as that keeper steps up to do a session, they will start offering that new behavior because they're getting so many really good special treats for that, that they definitely can tell us all apart. That was a great question, Julie. Anella, age six, wants to know if they can spray water out of their trunks and how far. And Chuck is doing a little bit of that Chuck right is now. doing that right now. Yeah, he's so he's kind of spraying himself down right now, which is really fun for us to see them showing those natural behaviors uh, when we do these kinds of sessions with them. They can spray their the water pretty far. If you've ever been to our demonstration, they can stand on the peninsula and spray um, all the way across and kind of into the crowd. We don't encourage them to do that or ask them to do that because that water can be pretty cold and surprising, um, but they will do that every once in a while to try and get our attention. Okay, Evan wants to know how much they weigh. So Chuck, the one who's a little bit closer to us, even though he's older, he's actually a little bit smaller than his brother. Chuck right now weighs about 6,700 pounds and Jake weighs about 7,600 pounds. So Jake is about 1,000 pounds heavier they just got weighed last week um, and Jake is a lot more concerned with eating food and Chuck is a lot more interested in being very playful so Chuck's burning more calories uh, so we have some curious questions if you're okay. not in the Colorado area um, it's snowing today it's really cold yes. so people are wondering how warm the barn is to kind of offset how cold it is outside um, we, our barn is, is pretty comfortable for these guys. I don't know the exact temperature of the inside of our barn. Um, but a lot of times on these days, what we'll do is we'll give the elephants the option to go outside. Um, they do like the snow. They don't mind playing in the snow. It was cool here yesterday as well. Um, and we did have our elephants get a little bit of outside time and they actually didn't come right back in when we opened doors. So they had the option. We, if we call that access. They had access to be inside or outside. But what we do is we want to make sure that our barn stays at least 50 degrees. So we have more of a, a minimum temperature for our barn, which is 50 degrees. If it gets to that temperature, um, then what we do is we ask all of our elephants to come inside and we close the doors so that the barn can warm up. Because if they're choosing to be inside to stay warm, we want to make sure the barn stays warm enough for them. Leslie's wondering if we'll get a female elephant at our zoo anytime soon. And Leslie, no, because Toyota Elephant Passage, which is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores, thank you so much for their support, was actually built just to hold Asian male elephants. Can you talk about why, Victoria? Yeah, so male elephants socialize really differently from female elephants. Typically, when you think about elephants socializing, you're going to think about those females and how they socialize, which is what's called a matriarchal herd system. So all of the ladies stay together for pretty much their entire lives. All of the sisters and grandmas and aunties, um, they all stick together their entire lives. And of course, as they have calves, some of those calves will be male calves. But male calves, as they start to go through their sexual maturity, somewhere between the ages of five and nine, they actually get kicked out of those herds. So they're completely kicked out and they are not welcome back. But those young males aren't quite mature yet. Like I said earlier, they won't be mature until about 20. And so they form what we call a loose bachelor herd, which means that they spend some time together and some time apart. So that's why we call it a loose bachelor herd. They're not together all of the time. They won't form another permanent bond the rest of their lives, 
These two are lucky since they're half brothers. They were raised together most of their early lives and uh, they got kicked out together. Hi Jake. <laughs> so they, uh, they, had, they had a buddy to hang out with kind of when they got kicked out, a buddy right away. But elephants like that we have like Billy who is, um, he's 12 right now. Bodhi is 15, he's gonna be 16 this week. Um, those guys got kicked out on their own and then they came here because we needed somewhere for them, them to be that's not housing females who are breeding. And then we have Groucho, our 50 year old, and he's kind of like the teacher to our younger guys. He teaches them how to be an adult male Asian elephant and be an appropriate bull. And this is a really good spot where they get to spend that time together, but we also have enough space where they can spend that time alone when they need a little bit of alone time. Uh, Fletcher would like to know why they have trunks and what they're used for. That is a great question. If you look at them and you can see right now, Chuck is chewing on some fire hose that he got. That's an enrichment, a toy for him to play with. Um, you can see that his mouth, where that fire hose is at, is really far away from the ground. And so he kind of uses that trunk. It's kind of like a nose for him. So at the end, he has two nostrils, just like we do as people. So he can smell things with it. But he also uses that trunk like a hand and an arm to put all of the food into his mouth. Uh, Ryan wants to know about the considerations we had to keep in mind when building a facility for all male elephants. We did have to consider how strong they are, how far their trunks can reach, uh, what they can do. So there's a lot of steel, a lot of concrete in here, but that's to keep our keepers and our elephants safe. Absolutely. And so we do work with them through what's called protected contact. So you'll see our keepers there on the other side of those cables interacting with them. We never share a space with yep. these elephants. When we do foot trims, someone asked if we give them pedicures. Yep. Um, if we do that, it's not really a pedicure, it's more of a nail filing, but yes. they'll present their foot over in that area and we can work with them on a voluntary basis. So there were a lot of considerations about the size and the strength of the exhibit that had to be taken into consideration for all males. And in fact, we actually just had to baby proof one of the yards <laughs> because it was built for uh, you know, adolescent and adult male elephants. And now we have a baby greater one horned rhino who's about to be in one of those yards. So we've had to put more protections on the lower level, on the lower parts of the exhibit so she yes. can't slip out. Let's see, Katie and Kaden want to know what are the two bumps on the top of their heads? And we can also explain how that makes them different from African elephants. Yeah, so those bumps are uh, those bumps are just part of their skull and the way that these guys are built. But that is one of the great ways to tell them apart from a from African elephants. So we have all Asian elephants here at Toyota Elephant Passage. But those two bumps are one of the great ways to tell an Asian elephant apart. African elephants will have more of a flat <laughs> head straight across on the top. Another great way to tell them apart is if you look at the size of their ears. You'll notice that these guys have pretty small ears. African elephants have ears that go all the way back and cover their shoulders. Another way to tell them apart that's my favorite and really easy to see right now while they're getting hosed down is that Asian elephants get these really cute pink freckles. You can see them really well on Chuck right now, right kind of below his eyes and above his tusks, right across the top of his trunk. He's got those that pink kind of white spot right now. Those are freckles that Asian elephants get. Each one of them gets a different pattern. It's one of the great ways to tell them apart. Um, African elephants don't get that. Those guys stay those guys stay all gray on their whole bodies. Uh, we have a lot of questions about how much these guys can eat in a day. Yes, these guys are really good eaters. As I said, Jake is a, a little bit better of an eater than his brother Chuck. Chuck's more worried about playing. Chuck right now is eating 100 pounds of hay every single day, and Jake gets 120 pounds of hay a day. 100 and 120 pounds of hay a day. Julie wants to know, do their tusks keep growing always, or do they stop growing at a certain point? So their tusks will continue to grow throughout their entire lives. The tusks are another great way to tell that these are Asian elephants. Asian elephants, only the male elephants have tusks and African elephants, both the females and the males have tusks. Asian elephant females can have really short tusks that probably won't make it out below that lip line um, that covers the tusk at the top. That's called, their, that's called their sulcus. And those are called tushes on a female Asian elephant. But these guys, their tusks will continue to grow throughout their entire lives. So as they grow and as they use them, pieces will break off. Um, we do what we call a tusk check every week where we get up close and we touch the ends of their tusks because ivory is a very brittle material. As it breaks, it splinters kind of like wood. And so what happens is they can create really sharp edges or deep cracks. And we only file their tusks. You can see that these guys have pretty smooth tusks on the end and that's because we'll file their tusks if we see anything that looks like it could be um, a long-term issue for them or something that could cause an, a problem like a deep crack 
um, or a sharp edge. And so they will allow us to use an electric sander and file those edges for them. Um, let's see, Ashley has a great question. Why do they keep their ears placed back most of the time? Does ear placement indicate mood like in cats? It can indicate mood a little bit. Um, a lot of what their ear placement is for is the fact that their ears are very thin. So elephants are what we call pachyderms. They have thick skin, but on their ears, around their eyes and by their mouths, their skin is very thin. And so their ears are actually able to tear and rip and get holes in them. But their ears have a lot of uh, vascular veins and everything in the back. It's a really good spot to be able to draw blood from. Um, but you can see right now, Chuck is flapping his ears. That's a little bit more playful. But their go-to position is to leave them back just to try and protect them a little bit more. Um, if these guys were living in Southeast Asia, they would be in pretty dense forests. So they would be able to get them caught on things and get little tears and holes and rips in them. So back is, back is probably more comfortable, the more natural spot for them to be. But definitely, if they are either trying to cool themselves off or if they're getting playful or curious, you can see Jake has his ears out right now. He's checking on us up here on the catwalk above him. He's blowing on our feet. Uh, um, but yeah, their, their ears are really an interesting part. Thank you for that answer. And thank you to everyone who's donating. We've raised $185 so far today. So thank you so much. If you're able, keep those donations coming. If you're a Denver local and you wanna to come to Denver Zoo when we reopen, now would be a great time to get a membership, show your support. Um, hi, Lala, she's nine. She says they eat more than a panda. <laughs> she tunes in quite regularly. So we're happy to see Lala there. Um, do they like, uh, what types of enrichment do they like? What are their favorite kind of toys and playful These items? guys typically get really playful with these fire, uh, fire hose ribbons that you can see. They did get these tossed into them, but they're still having fun in the hoses. This is one of their more fun toys. We grabbed a couple of their favorites. They like to put those, they throw them up on their back and they kind of wiggle them off, kind of like giving themselves a little, a little back scratch. Um, they really enjoy tires. They really enjoy um, logs. The other day we had a big giant log out in our yard and they worked together and split that one in half. <laughs> um, one of their absolute favorite things to get to do is play with any of our older boys. They love getting to spend time. They, get to spend time hanging out with Billy or Bodie or Groucho. They just got to spend uh, the morning hanging out by Bodie and spending time with him. So these guys really love to play with pretty much everything. Uh, hi, Peyton. We are not have any plans to ever get a girl elephant here, Toyota Elephant Passage, uh, which is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores here in the Denver area. This is an all male facility. It's built specifically for Asian male elephants. So we're a place where these adolescent and older males can come when they don't have a family group. Um, but we hope to be able to collect semen samples and send them out to other zoos to help um, if they get an SSP breeding recommendation. And the SSP is the Species Survival Plan. It's a way that we help keep these species that are endangered, threatened, vulnerable uh, going. So here they are, they have finished their little hose time. And now you'll see them kind of exploring this area. This is just one of the many areas of Toyota Elephant Passage. This is the parlor. So this is a great public viewing area when we have some elephants in here. They have a lot of different areas they can explore. And so this is Chuck. He's probably coming over to say hello to see if Victoria has any treats. And she does not because she's working with me right here. So Jennifer wants to know if they'll make a sound if asked. We Ooh. don't have that. <laughs> Carly just got surprised by Jake who blew on her feet pretty hard. We don't have that as a behavior that we can ask them for. Vocalizing is a really important way that they can communicate with um, with each other. So we don't ask them to make any sounds, but these guys are very vocal. Um, Chuck especially, Chuck is one of our louder elephants. He does a lot of trumpeting, um, really, really loud. So both these guys, uh, as, soon as, as soon as they moved here to Denver, which was September 23rd of 2018, they were very vocal if they got new toys that they were enjoying or if they wanted to be closer to other elephants or anything like that. They are not afraid to speak their opinion. And so we hear a lot of trumpeting out of these two. And a lot of times um, it can mean that they think that they're having a pretty exciting time with something. So you just mentioned that Jake and Chuck joined us in September of 2019. 2018. 2018. Oh my gosh, that was such a long time ago. Um, Amber wants to know how difficult is it to introduce a new elephant to the group? We work on that really slowly. Um, we get to know each one of our elephants as individuals. Um, these, these two were pretty fun because we really got to learn a lot about them since they moved here together. We could see them interact with each other and learn a lot about their behaviors that way. Um, 
but getting to know them as individuals is a really important part of that and then we just take it really really slowly so we have different areas of our barn where they can be separate from each other but still reach through and touch another elephant or smell, smell another elephant um, but giving giving them the opportunity to, to interact if they want to or walk away if that's what they want to do um, and so we just took it really slowly and introduced them um, as individuals to each other as groups um, but just reading the behavior all of us being here as a team paying attention to each elephant not just these two but also paying attention to Billy and Bodie and Groucho as they met them because these guys are pretty rambunctious they definitely like to play a lot and our older guys are a little bit more mature but just taking it really slowly is, is a big key to introducing them absolutely so let's see uh -huh. okay so do you want to repeat that because some people are having trouble hearing. Oh yeah, sorry, not a problem. No, it's okay, so, we have masks on. We're trying really hard <laughs> yeah. to speak up here, but it can be tough. Um, so these guys, we just introduce really, really slowly. Uh, we have barriers between them and we do, it's called a howdy, where there's a physical barrier between them, um, but they can still reach through and touch the other elephant, smell the other elephant, um, but both of those elephants having the opportunity to walk away in the opposite direction. So they don't have to spend time together if they don't want to, but getting to know each elephant as individuals is really important and then having them just take time slowly reading behavioral cues from them about whether they're interested in spending time together if they're playing appropriately and just taking it really really slowly making sure that we have enough people um, here when we do those introductions that everyone can be paying attention to each each elephant and uh, focusing on them but just taking it really slowly when we do those introductions let's see oh it's something we haven't talked about because it doesn't totally apply to these guys mm -hmm. yet is must yes and what that is and how we handle it here at denver zoo yeah so we have all male elephants and male elephants go through a hormonal period called must m-u-s-t-h looks like chuck's gonna take a little roll in the sand put some <laughs> sunscreen and bug spray back on um, but must is a hormonal period that every male elephant will go through as they get to be more mature and it typically is happens about once a year and lasts about three months during that time, their testosterone will raise to 60 times their normal testosterone. They'll become a lot more aggressive. Um, they can become more aggressive to other males, but their big focus during that time is finding females to breed with. It's thought that their testosterone raises so that not dominant bulls, so uh, bulls like Bodie and Billy, Chuck and Jake would have the opportunity to be a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher to take on the dominant bull for breeding rights to prevent inbreeding in uh in uh, elephant populations um so we have seen groucho has definitely goes through must he typically goes into must in the fall and early winter billy and bodie are both in must right now a way that you can tell that they're in must on the outside is that they become really stinky um, but they get a swollen temporal gland which is right between their eye and their ear it swells up and it basically creates a sinus pressure headache for about three months and that drains temporin which is a hormone that kind of lets other elephants know not to mess with them right now. Other, other male elephants know that that's not an elephant that you want to, uh, that you want to go and be rough with. They'll also urine dribble, so they'll continuously be going to the bathroom and their back legs will become stained with urine. It can be pretty uncomfortable for these guys, so we do give them a hose down every day as they're going through must. Um, they can get really distracted. That's a lot of what we see from Billy. <laughs> we see him just get really distracted during that time. It takes him a little bit more time to focus during a training session. And we actually just started to see a few signs from Chuck that he may be going through one of his first musts. We don't see much temporal draining or urine dribbling just yet since it's probably one of his first musts, but he's been moving really slowly. Even walking this slow right now is pretty unusual for Chuck. He's a very high energy <laughs> elephant. So just to see him moving at kind of the normal speed for an elephant is unusual. And he's also been pretty distracted. So we're, we're suspecting that between that and looking at blood work and seeing higher uh, white blood cell counts, which is typical for seeing in must as well, that he's most likely experiencing his first must. Um, and right now Chuck is modeling spring's hottest trend, the yes. fire hose headband. Yep. He just picked that up with his trunk and <laughs> flung it onto his head. And I yes. think he looks great. He does. So he's really enjoying that. Uh, Jake went over and inspected the headband, but he said it's really not for him. Yeah. Uh, Isaac says they look so small from this angle. And these are two of our smallest yes. guys. Yep. Um, but yeah, they do. This is a really fun, unique opportunity for us to show you different vantage points that you don't normally see when you visit Denver Zoo. So while we are really bummed not to have our guests here, we're excited to be able to show you some unique perspectives uh, that you don't normally get to see. So we're really happy you're all joining us. Uh, Adam wants to know, is Bodhi more aggressive during his must? 
Yes, absolutely. We see the biggest, um, really probably the biggest aggression change with him and Groucho, our two oldest. So that would make the most sense since they are um, a little bit older. Their must is, is more uh, established, I guess I'll say. They know how to handle it a, a little bit more, but Bodhi really gets frustrated with doors moving during his must. So during his must, we, we take a lot more time holding him. Um, so one person will be giving him treats somewhere while a door moves, asking him to stay there with them, and then asking him to move to the location where the door has either opened or closed from. Ryan says, are we able to do behavioral observations from this elevated catwalk that we might not be able to at our you know, eye level vantage point? Um, we are able to do observations from up here. Uh, as you guys may have seen, if you've been hanging out for a little while, Ryan, you may have noticed that these guys will come over and hang out and check on us, even though we're up here and we haven't given them any treats or enrichment or food from up here, um, they still will come and check on us. So we actually have a surveillance system throughout all of Toyota Elephant Passage. and. Those cameras are up high. There's one right by uh, Carly and I up here. So we do get a higher vantage point with those cameras, um, but a lot of our behavioral observations, if we're in a spot where they know that we typically will give them reinforcement or treats from, uh, we'll use those cameras to do observations. Uh, Amanda's curious about how big the elephants will get. So these guys are still growing at 10 and 11. They won't be done growing until they're about 20. These guys are a little bit on the small side. Uh, Chuck, especially on the small side, he's. He's only a little bit younger than Billy, and Billy's about 2,000 pounds bigger than he is. So these guys probably won't be quite as big as Groucho, but Groucho, our fully grown adult <laughs> male elephant at 50 years old, um, he is over 10 and a half feet tall at the shoulder. These guys are standing probably right around seven, seven and a half feet tall at the shoulder. And these guys, Chuck weighs about 6,700 pounds. Jake is about 7,600 pounds right now. Um, and Groucho right now weighs about 11,600. Wow, so they have a ways to go. Quite a bit of growing to do. Oh my gosh, they're having a great time. We'll take some more questions. Uh, what are their favorite treats? We kind of give hay as a main part of their diet, yeah. which you can see, but we also give them what we call high value yes. treats. Yes, so we give them high value and low value. Low value is, ask, is if they are doing something that we're asking them to do um, that is pretty easy for them, like asking them to move to a location or follow us along a space that's a pretty easy thing for them to do asking them to put their trunk up in the air is a pretty easy one so for those things they're going to get apples sweet potatoes and carrots if we're asking them to do something a little bit more complex or something new then they're going to get what we call high value and that's typically things like pears and oranges pineapple broccoli lettuce celery uh, they get melons for blood draws chuck actually gets papayas for blood draws we saw that he really enjoyed those a lot more than the melons so chuck really really likes papayas um, and Jake pretty much will eat anything so he he likes anything elephants really love anything that has a high sugar content oh man they, they're like me then yes. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty smart. Amy wants to know if all the boys get along we have five boys here ranging in ages from 50 to 10 so yes. how do they get along yeah they do all get along they definitely all have different relationships um, with each other these guys play really differently uh, with each other than versus them playing with Billy versus them playing with uh, Groucho, who's 50, Groucho isn't interested in playing quite as much. He still will play, though. Um, and then these guys also interact with our other elephants really differently if it's them play, if it's them interacting one-on-one -on -one or if it's a group. So each different grouping of them, um, we have 31 different social combinations we can utilize. They do all get along, but definitely all of those relationships are different. Hi, Christine. Jake is on the left. You can tell him apart if you're here at the zoo because his ears fold back. And Chuck here with the fire hose headband, his ears fold forward a little bit. So that's an easy way to tell these two apart. They're very similar in size and coloring because they're half brothers. But if you look there and one of them has more freckles across their nose than the yes, other, right? Chuck does. Chuck has more of those pink freckles. So look for the freckles yeah. and the folded forward ears. That's Chuck and Jake. And then it's so easy to tell which one they are when they're next to our bigger elephants because yes. they're just yeah. so much smaller. Uh, Jordan wants to know, do we brush their teeth? We don't brush their teeth. Elephants get six sets of teeth in their lifetime. So as humans, we get two. These guys get six. They only have four teeth in their mouth. Uh, they have two on top and two on the bottom. They can uh, weigh up to about 10 pounds and they're about the size of a brick. And when they lose those teeth, they actually lose them more like a conveyor belt. They come in from the back and small pieces will break off in the front. So we don't have to brush their teeth. Their mouth does a pretty good job of taking care of them, but we will do 
um, tooth inspections or looking at their teeth, asking them to open their mouth up really wide. And then to look at their bottom teeth because those ones can be harder to see sometimes when they pick their trunk way up high in the air. Um, we can actually use a plumber's camera into their mouth to see those bottom teeth. Amanda wants to know how the zoo makes money if no one's here. That's a great question. We rely totally on the support of people like you who are watching these lives. You can see we have the donate button there. So if you can donate and support us at this time, that would be great. Even if it's the cost of one ticket or one dip and dot or a souvenir refill, we appreciate anything you can do right now to help us while we are closed to guests. So you can make donations here through Facebook. You can go to our website, demerzoo.org slash emergency fund. Uh, we'll put those links in there. You can also vote for our new baby rhino's name. That's another way you can support us. So thank you to everyone who has been donating. A special thank you to your hometown Toyota stores. They make Toyota Elephant Passage possible. So thank you to them. Uh, thank you to everyone who's sponsoring or who's sponsoring, donating, and supporting us right now. Oh, Rachel wants to know how we decide which combo of elephants to put together each day? That is a really good question. So for quite a while after Chuck and Jake moved here, we were participating in a behavioral study because when they arrived, we had the largest group of male elephants living together in North America. So we had a really unique opportunity to study their behavioral um, actions together and then also collect samples to look at different hormone levels of stress um, of them being together. So for a while we were being kind of told about which elephants they needed more time observing together, but now we get to make more of the decisions, which is fun for us and can also be a little overwhelming each day, but we know which elephants are really comfortable together. So on days like today, where it's cooler outside and they're gonna spend more time in the barn, we know that Chuck and Jake are pretty comfortable um, together inside and that they're not afraid to lay down or take a nap, but they still are gonna get chances to interact. They got to spend some time with Bodhi, our 15 year old this morning, interacting through uh, one of our barriers like a howdy. So Bodhi could leave if he wanted to, but giving them the option to spend time together, uh, we'll do a lot of shifting. So changing up who they're spending time with throughout the day. Even when they're outside in the yards, we can open doors up or shift them around. Um, but it really just depends on their individual behavior that day and how they're doing, seeing if they're interested in spending time together, um, if they're more interested in spending the day alone. Um, but just testing that out and doing those quick howdies before we put them together for the day is how we usually decide. Um, let's see, at what age uh, do they start to form those loose bachelor herds? So these young guys, they get kicked out of those female groups somewhere between the ages um, of, it can really be even as young as four to about nine years old. It just depends on them as individuals and that female group that they're with um, about when they get kicked out and when they'll go and find those bachelor herds to be part of. So I'm going to take just a couple more questions. Um, someone's asking what they're doing right now. They're eating their diet of hay yes. and kind of sparring over they it are, too. Yep, There's yeah. plenty to go around, but they both want the exact same piece. Yes. Like any uh, teenagers and yes. kids. Uh, True brothers. <laughs> yes, they really are. Caden, Karis, and Eden are wondering how tall they are. It can be kind of hard to tell while we're elevated. It can be hard to tell while we're elevated. We measure them, um, their height by their shoulder height. Uh, since their heads, they're able to lift those up and down, and that can really change how tall they are. So right now, I would guess that these guys are right around seven and a half, maybe getting um, a little bit closer to eight feet tall at the shoulder. All right, thank you, Melanie, for that donation. Uh, Josephine wants to know, she's eight. How old are they when their tusks start to come in? They are, they're pretty young. They're on the young side when their tusks start to uh, show up. That can also really depend on their genetics as well. How long their tusks are is genetic. Um, so they're still on the young side, somewhere between uh, one and two, maybe even a little bit earlier. Hi, TJ. We can't give you a total size comparison right now because our other elephants are in their bedrooms. Um, but if you go to our Facebook page, we have lots of pictures of the different combos of boys and you'll definitely see the difference uh, when someone like Jake stands next to Groucho yeah. or even Bodie, who's gotten so tall. So you'll definitely be able to see a difference there, especially when and if you can come back and visit us when we reopen. So I think that covers it. I'm seeing a lot of questions that we answered earlier. So if you missed anything, you can always go to our YouTube page, Denver Zoo, uh, just search Denver Zoo on YouTube. Here's another enrichment activity yeah. they're getting. More this toys. is a puzzle feeder. Yes, yeah, so these are, uh, these are puzzle feeders. You can see that they're both cubes, so they got the exact same toy. They don't have to worry about stealing from the other one. <laughs> Um, but they have holes in them, so they have just a small hole drilled into it, and then inside of there is 
what's called a wild herbivore grain. So it's kind of like a dog food, but made for elephants or any animal that's an herbivore. So it's a lot of different plant material compressed together. This is a special treat. It's an enrichment treat for them. Um, so it's something that they have to work for and play with these toys to get out. It looks like Jake's gonna see if Chuck's toys any easier to work on today. <laughs> um, but they have to roll those around and slowly work on getting that food out. It helps to extend their feeding time. Um, just like us as people, it's not good for us to eat really, really quickly. Same thing for elephants, but these guys will eat really quickly if the food is offered to them. So we like to be able to slow them down, um, keep them busy. And this is something that, that they really, really enjoy getting to play with. And so you can see, if you can see the box, the hole is very small, which means the food is even smaller. Yes. And explain mm -hmm. how they can pick it up with such precision. Yeah, so their trunks on the end, they have a really, a lot of dexterity in there. Um, they actually have on the end what's almost like a finger. We call it a finger. Um, that's another great way to tell Asian elephants and African elephants apart is that Asian elephants on the bottom of their trunk have two muscles. That's almost like the bottom of the palm of your hand. If you make a fist and you feel those two show. muscles down here, that's kind of what the bottom of their trunk looks like. And then on the top, there's just one finger. And so they're able to pick up really tiny things, even just the size of one grape using that trunk and so gently that that grape doesn't, that that grape doesn't crack. Um, they're able to pick it up really, really gently. African elephants, they have two fingers, so one finger on the top and then one finger on the bottom, and that's how they're able to pick things up. Awesome, well this puzzle feeder activity is a bit loud, so yes. we're just gonna let the boys enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching again. If you missed any of this, you can go to our YouTube page, just search Denver Zoo on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing so you get a notification when we post a new video, this will also be on our virtual safari website, uh, denverzoo.org slash zoo to you. That is Z-O-O-T-O-Y-O-U. We have a lot of resources on there just beyond these videos. We have activities and educational resources for parents if you want something for your kids. So thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Another very special thank you to your hometown Toyota stores for being such a great partner to Denver Zoo. Uh, signing off from Toyota Elephant Passage, this is Carly and Victoria, Jake and Chuck. Have a good day, everyone.